There we are. Hey, carefree cooks everywhere. We're together once again. It's uh, Chef Todd Moore. Did you have a great holiday? Well, that's good because uh, we love uh, seeing everything that everyone had done this week. Welcome, everyone. I see Lynn Bloom is with us. Uh, Darlene Blackett is here. I'm seeing my thumbs ups and my hearts, so I know we're live. There'll be no problems <laughs> with uh, Facebook today. Uh, so welcome, everyone. Uh, it is Tuesday. We're talking. It's Tuesday Talk Live. If it's not Tuesday and you don't hear me talking, well, that means that uh, you didn't get my alert. You need to go to webcookingclasses.com slash live and uh, register for my message alert system so you know whenever we're going live to talk about the cool uh, things that are going on in cooking and food all over the world because we're carefree cooks, right? We create our own recipes. And what does this do? <laughs> what did it do for you last week? It brings your friends and family together around good food and cooking. Uh, plus, versus following written instructions, when you're a carefree cook, you learn every time you cook. You observe and you use it for the next time. And what this does is creates your own cooking style. So you practice pro methods. You wind up loving your cooking. There's no doubt about it. And if you're looking for past Tuesday Talk Lives, uh, go to my Pinterest page or look for Chef Todd Moore on Instagram and they're all cataloged there for you as well. Uh, so today, when you know the five categories of appetizers, you will have the best party this year. Plus, the, the Web Cooking Classes store is now open, and I want to tell you even more about that. So welcome, everyone. Welcome all the new Carefree Cooks that are joining us. I'm so glad. Uh, I hope everyone had a great Carefree holiday every, uh, everywhere, and uh, there's just so much more to come, right? Just, just because Americans eat turkey, in November doesn't mean the holidays are over for everybody all over the world. So we've got so much more exciting holiday cooking. Uh, we have so many more opportunities to make ourselves proud. I know our carefree cooks have made me so proud this holiday season. All the great photos, all the things I'm going to share with you in just a minute. Um, let's see who else is joining us. Angela is with us. Welcome. Uh, let's see. Let's get to the bottom. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Jerry is here. Uh, Linda, like I said, is here with us as well. Who else is joining? Bob and Ann and Bonnie. That's good. Okay. I can't just talk about names all day long. Uh, look, the holidays are coming. You're going to have parties. You're going to have these stand-up parties, right? There, there's so many opportunities to put tremendous flavor into a two-bite package, but, you know, we've had enough of the Velveeta sausage dip, okay? That was cool in the 1950s, good. And you know what? We've loved your spinach artichoke dip for many, many years. Since the 60s, your spinach artichoke dip was great. Harry has had enough of my spinach artichoke dip. You tell him, Harry. And you know what? Your seven layer dip, well, it's been great since 1978. This is all very, very exciting. but. How about we put some new ideas into our holiday appetizers this year? How about we get away from mom's finger sandwiches pushed around on, on TV tables? Did you have TV tables when you were a kid? Did, I did. You remember? But anyway, as an aside, it's time to get some new stuff in there, some new exciting appetizers this year. You don't have to do the same thing again and again. You don't ever have to do what mom did. And if you're a carefree cook, you're exciting. You're, you want to try new things. You want to figure out new stuff. You want to get those aha moments from people. But before I tell you about the five categories of appetizers, I have a very exciting announcement for you, ladies and gentlemen, the Carefree Cooks Web Cooking Classes store is now open. Uh, so if you go to webcookingclasses.com slash store, you'll be able to see all the cool things that are in there because I've added some women's t-shirts that are in there with the Web Cooking Classes logo. We've got some great t-shirts, men's shirts. I just got myself one of these knit hats because it's getting so cold here in Baltimore. We've got some aprons for you as well, some lunch bags, other kinds of hats, coffee cups. Oh, the totes, they're very popular, windbreakers, coffee cups, all all kinds of stuff when you go to webcookingclasses.com slash store. Okay, uh, <laughs> an announcement from our sponsor, if you will. But look, th there is a way to uh, get new ideas into your holiday appetizers this year because really when it comes down to it, this is cooking by method 
just like anything else is. Now, if, if you're stressing out about your holiday parties to come and your pot luck, by the way, uh, next week we're going to talk about my pot luck secrets, how to be the person that stands out on that mess of a holiday pot luck table. But that's next Tuesday Talk Live. This Tuesday Talk Live, we're talking about what's going to go on that pot luck table. And when you cook by method, the whole idea is that you, you like to take a method, like a saute method, a roasting method, a steaming method, a braising method, a smoking method, a poaching method. You know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, you take a method and then you apply the ingredients to it. That's why you never need a recipe. And that's when you're a carefree cook. Method plus the ingredients that my diet needs me to do or my desires want me to do. And you create an endless number of original dishes. So why can't this be the same way for holiday appetizers? Because these two bite foods, they're very challenging. Like people think, oh, it's so easy to, to buy phyllo cups at the store and throw something in it. It might not be that easy because when you're talking about holiday appetizers, you're not only talking about baking but cooking. You could have hot items and cold items. You're talking about grains as well as meats, binding agents for salads, holding these things hot for a while, making something that's only two bites could actually be harder than making an entire plate of stuff. Do you, you get what I'm saying? To really be able to impress somebody in two bites is like writing a novel in five words. You know? How do you take all that skill and all that knowledge and put it into something that somebody can hold in their hand while they have their drink in their hand and they're blah, 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 blah. They're talking to someone at the party. So let's talk about these holiday appetizers because there are five categories of holiday appetizers that can help you create the best uh, items uh, this year. So this is where I'm going to give you the method and you have an aha moment with the ingredient, okay? So get out a piece of paper if you want and write this down because this is really good stuff. First of all, the word hors d'oeuvres, I shouldn't have put it up there. I should have asked you to spell it. Uh, the hors d'oeuvres, <laughs> hors d'oeuvres is a French term and it really means outside the work. And the history of hors d'oeuvres or appetizers really came from the kitchen staff. And traditionally, these were scraps of food that the chef had left over from preparing this, the, the main meal. And it was actually the waiters and waitresses. It was the service staff that would quickly put together something to excite the palate and anticipate uh, the meal to come. And these were always one or two bite food mostly because we weren't sitting at the table yet. If you think about stand-up cocktail tables, especially at holiday time, you don't have a knife and fork. And this is the caterer's rule. If you need a knife and fork to eat it, it can't be a cocktail thing. It's got to be two bites or one bite in your mouth. But like I said, this isn't as simple as it seems because hors d'oeuvres can use every single skill in the kitchen because they can contain meat and poultry and fish and shellfish, vegetables, potatoes, potatoes, grains, fruits, baked goods, sauces. I mean, hors d'oeuvres require a working knowledge of most everything that goes on to the kitchen if you really want to be the person that stands out this year. And there are really only two limitations to preparing hors d'oeuvres, and that's your imagination and the items that are available to you. That's it. If you can dream something up and then go get that ingredient, you can make almost any hors d'oeuvre known to man. There are no rules, but there are some guidelines. So let's talk about some of these guidelines and the five categories for hors d'oeuvres this holiday season. The first are filled pastry shells. And yes, you can go to the store and get the filled phyllo cups. You know I'm not a snotty chef, right? <laughs> you know I'm more like be proud of your cooking than say that you ground the flour yourself. It's not necessary. Now, you want to take phyllo sheets or you want to make your own. Nobody makes their own phyllo dough. You want to make some kind of dough. That's great. That puts even more love into it. But if you want to go buy the pastry cups, that's really cool. So something that's filled in a pastry cup, uh, savory tartlets, chicken salad or shrimp salad, uh, you can make your own pat -a choux in web cooking classes. We have an entire week on making little pat -a choux puff pastry tarts that you rip the top off and there's this little cup in there that you can fill and then put the top back on. I, I think I even show you how to make a swan. Is it that lesson? 
It might be another lesson that I'll show you how to make little swans. Um, the same type of thing goes for crostini. How about baking a loaf of French bread, slicing it, brushing it with some herbed oil, toasting it, and then... Oh, I don't know. Put whatever you want on top of it. But a lot of that flavor can go in the crostini. What about a round piece of sourdough bread? Um, spread some blue cheese on it. Uh, 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 broil it, direct conductive heat. Get the blue cheese all kind of melty and crispy. And then put strips of roast beef and, and a horseradish sauce on top. You, you see what I'm talking about? You know, all, all that popped into my head was Christini. And then I start going, what else? Christini. Um, how about uh, blue cheese? Yeah. Put it under the oven. <sighs> bubbly, 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 brown, crispy. Oh my goodness. What goes with blue cheese? Well, maybe some steak. What goes with steak? Maybe some horseradish, you know? This is how it all comes together for me. So you can put small little dough products together and make this. They should be toasted, by the way. You, you don't just slice French bread and then put chicken salad on it because it'll all seep into the bread. They get really, really mushy sitting on your buffet table. So everything has got to be toasted to avoid becoming soggy. Uh, some of the things I used to do in my catering company, this was a uh, chicken, cornucop chicken fajita cornucopia. We used to call it. I took these little round tortilla shells. They were barely that big. And it was a strip of julienne chicken, one strip of red pepper, one strip of green pepper, one strip of uh, sauteed onion. And I think we put uh, salsa in it or something and rolled it into a horn, like tighter on one end and wider on the other. So it just had four strips of things. But when you looked at it this way, it, it looked so pretty and colorful. So I would put this under the stuffed item, a cornucopia, a round phyllo or wonton or anything like that that you can put into a horn shape it was really attractive. Uh, we used to do, here's the puff, pa the uh, phyllo puffs with chicken salad. We used to do that. Don't make fun of my chicken, the, my carved chicken. That was early in my career. This picture might be from like 2002, I think, 2003 maybe. So in 15 years, I've done better than, than my cantaloupe chicken. Don't make fun of my... Give me love for the cantaloupe chicken. We, we all need cantaloupe chicken love. I'm not sure what that means. Um, what were these? Oh, uh, my mini chicken Wellingtons. Uh, you can find a lot of videos uh, on my Facebook page uh, right here on this very page for mini chicken Wellingtons. I used to do them every holiday season at my catering company. It was a, oh, thank you for all the hearts, gigantic seller at my catering company. And it was puff pastry dough, sauteed mushrooms deglazed with sherry down on the puff pastry, piece of uh, grilled chicken, wrap it up, uh, egg wash it, and put it in the oven. They were unbelievable. And we did chicken Wellingtons. We did beef Wellingtons. We even did shrimp Wellingtons because they were wrapped in puff pastry. So only on this first category of hors d'oeuvres, I hope you got your mind going already. Think of phyllo cup and then something else. Think of puff pastry dough and then something else. Think of mini tortillas and make a cornucopia out of it. Cool. Thank you for all the hearts. I'm loving it. The second type is brochettes, skewers, or kebabs. Come on now. You could stick a, a stick. <laughs> you could stick a stick in anything, anything on a stick. And you know, if you think about this, if you go to the county fair, if you go to the Renaissance Festival, like I do here in Maryland every year, there's always stuff on a stick. Why do you think there's stuff on a stick? so that you can walk around with it, right? So you could have the same thing, any kind of kebab, any kind of small bite of meat or, or poultry or even fish or shrimp or things like that on a stick. Makes it that much easier. And you don't have to mess with toothpicks. If you know how to display them correctly, you can fan those sticks out on a display platter. It looks really, really cool. These things, they can be roasted. They can be grilled. They can be broiled. I mean, they're really easy to cook. The, 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 the real um, effort in it is skewering them usually. Makes it more difficult. 
if you're going to grill them or broil them, if they're going to be subjected to direct, intense, conductive heat, you really might want to uh, soak those wooden uh, skewers first so that they don't burn, you know, immediately under that. So soak them in wood. And here's some ideas. Doesn't even have to be cooked. What about little uh, baby cherry tomatoes, mozzarella balls, slices of basil? You could even drizzle like balsamic vinegar over that. That's an uncooked Italian appetizer that just... That'd be great. Uh, shrimp, shrimp uh, in any way, uh, marinated shrimp ceviche, uh, grilled shrimp, a uh, pesto shrimp that each have their own little skewer or skewer two shrimp together and, and put a sauce on them. That, I mean, that's certainly easy enough. And doing any kind of meats, threading meats uh, to make a romaki kind of thing. The third thing are meatballs. The third category of uh, appetizers at the holiday are meatballs. Uh, everybody knows that they can take some kind of ground beef and make a ball out of it and you got an appetizer, right? But let's get beyond ground beef. I mean, there's a world of flavorful meats out there. And if you're not vegetarian, if you're not vegan, there are uh, just bison. There's uh, just all, all kinds of things the world over. Try some of these. Try lamb, making lamb meatballs instead. Try pork meatballs, barbecue pork meatballs. Try chicken meatballs. They all have the same method, right? They're ground meat. How would you make a meatball? Without, don't, don't go looking for a recipe. Carefree cooks, don't go for recipes. If I asked you to close your eyes and think about how you would make a meatball, you would close your eyes and you got to take some ground meat. I would put some egg in there and some seasoning. Some people put cheese. Some people put breadcrumbs. Well, there you go, right? There's the method that you would use. So if you're going to use um, eggs to bind something, you could use the eggs to bind ground chicken or ground turkey or anything like that. Even fish uh, use egg whites to, to bind a haddock or a cod or any kind of lean white fish that's near you or salmon for that matter. You could do salmon balls. Uh, these all can be turned into a meat, quote unquote, or a fish ball. So get beyond ground beef when you talk about this category of hors d'oeuvres. They can be served in the sauce. This is another great advantage of meatballs because uh, you know, you've got a crock pot or you've got a chafing dish. And if you serve them in the sauce, they stay hot for a long time and they continue to, to uh, absorb that flavor. Uh, some of the things that we used to do in my catering company, these are crab cakes. Yeah, crab cakes. Crab cakes are a meatball. No? You'd have to argue the difference between meatballs and crab cakes to me because it's a fish bound with an egg, you know, with some crumbs just the way the meatball is. We used to do what made our crab cakes, beside the fact that I went to culinary school and taught at my alma mater at Baltimore Culinary, um, and I was in North Carolina at the time, I think, of course, we had the best crab cakes in all of North Carolina because... I did the Maryland style, you know, but my chef, Greg, rest in peace. Um, he did a honey bourbon, uh, remoulade sauce. And that's what that dish is. Let's see right here at the bottom. That's it right there. That's what that dish is at the bottom, honey bourbon remoulade. And you know, it's one of those things that chef Greg made it. I've been trying to duplicate that for years, but I guess it will be gone with, with Greg. So, uh, meatballs, crab cakes are meatballs. How about Swedish meatballs? Uh, one of my favorite things is to do stroganoff meatballs, not too far from Swedish meatballs, but stroganoff mushrooms, beef gravy, sour cream with meatballs. You can't, can't beat it. Um, and it gives you a nice presentation as well. These little forks or toothpicks, and you can line all the meatballs up in a row, maybe a swash of a, of a sauce or something to put them on. Gives you a really nice presentation. The fourth is rumaki. Rumaki is something wrapped in something else. The, the strict definition of rumaki was generally chicken livers uh, wrapped in bacon. But man, oh man, these days you can wrap anything in anything, can't you, right? So th let's, let's expand the definition of rumaki and let's go in anything wrapped around anything else, right? Prosciutto wrapped around melon, the, the salty and the, and the sweet, the, the kind of chewy, rubbery and the very soft melon. What a great contrast of 
of textures, of flavors, of colors. Uh, you could do a, a, a wonton, use wonton wrappers. Uh, I knew a place that would uh, cut the wonton wrappers in strips and then wrap it around the shrimp like a candy cane kind of thing twice and drop them in the deep fryer. They were so pretty. It was like a shrimp in a basket. You know, it was really, really cool. So wonton can be used also. Um, what about ham and cheese? You know, that great combination together. A nice ham, some kind of really nice imported cheese or just a little taste test to see where the kind of salty goes with the tart, you know, which cheese would be best for you. Um, if you have my uh, Spanish Food Finds DVD, that's what we did a whole thing about touring in Barcelona. We went to the Museum of Hamon. And I mean, once I tasted Spanish Hamon wrapped around Manchego cheese, oh my goodness, I, <laughs> I could never go back again. So Ramaki, wrap something around something else. Is that an idea for you? I think you could do that as well. You could skewer them. They could be baked. Everyone's done a, a bacon wrapped something. But here's my tip on bacon wrapped something. You got to par cook the bacon. So absolute raw bacon around a delicate scallop means the scallop is way overdone by the time the bacon is done. So most often cook that bacon 50 to 75% of the way, then wrap your scallop and go ahead and finish it. It's, it's a tough gauge, you know, to, to try and gauge when they're both going to be done together. That's why I say the two bite things take so much skill. Uh, what about jalapenos? Somebody this week was talking about their favorite at the holiday was a jalapeno strip uh, wrapped around something else. You can use peppers and jalapenos. This is what I was talking about with the shrimp, wrapping shrimp in phyllo dough and then baking it or grilling it wrap something around something else. And then the last category is stuffed. Stuffed wonton, stuffed phyllo, stuffed puff pastry, stuffed pate de choux, uh, any, any kind of stuffed empanadas. I mean, every culture, uh, samosas in India, every culture has a, a dough where something is stuffed into it, whether they're meat pies or minced pies or at the holiday time, there is always a pie of some sort. So you can do thin layers of dough and then you can stuff them with anything. But here's my idea for you. Why does it even have to be dough? How about a uh, wonton uh, with crab and cream cheese? Use wonton wrappers. Use phyllo dough. But also, how about layers of uh, uh, cucumbers or vegetables? Or if you have a mandolin, you can cut potatoes wafer, wafer thin. And instead of the dough, imagine getting yourself a, a large potato, running it through your mandolin, getting a paper thin slice, wrapping that around a shrimp or something else and baking it or, or pan frying it. So the whole dough wrapping things around doesn't even have to be dough. It, you can substitute something for that. Uh, if you can use phyllo with spinach and feta, puff pastry around beef or chicken, uh, sp something like spanakot. Uh, drop your phyllo dough or, or even uh, the cuts of potato, like I was mentioning, get a muffin pan, uh, wipe butter into the bottom of the muffin pan, push these uh, thin slices of potato you just made on your mandolin into the muffin pan, fill it with anything else that you want and bake it off, and then they'll come out as muffins. I'm sure you've seen that trick before. Uh, here's another jalapeno with cheese in the middle. Stuff something with something else and then then wrap it. So you're doing kind of the stuffed rumaki. You're using two of them at once. So there's a great opportunity to open the whole world of new ideas of hors d'oeuvres for you this year. And the only thing really left is your imagination. Do you want to do stuffed mushroom caps? with sausage or shrimp or clams or beef. Instead of the mushroom, how about cucumber cups that you can stuff? How about clams or oysters on a half shell? Uh, how about hollowed out small pastries like I've taught you before, uh, or, or artichokes or any natural item that you can hollow out? It's absolutely endless. So when you stick to the five categories of hors d'oeuvres for the holidays, then you can start to again cook by method and become totally carefree when it comes to holiday appetizers because you go in your head, I want to make a meatball. It's one of the five. What kind of meatball do I want to make? It seems, it to me, it just seems so much easier than trying to find a recipe, you know, than going through books. I want to wrap something around something else. Prosciutto, shrimp, 
shrimp meat prosciutto i'm done you know so when you cook by category it just makes everything so much easier for you and we talk about easy easy cooking i am so impressed with our carefree cooks community this year the holidays were unbelievable for them. We had turkeys everywhere, and again and again and again. Chef Todd, best turkey I ever made. Not, it, it's again, it's not because they bought a different kind of turkey. It's because of how they cook the turkey. People are roasting better. This is Amy's eight pound turkey. Beautiful turkey, small turkey, eight pound turkey. Do you know why it's so small? And it shows you you can cook anywhere because Amy lives in a motor home. Amy cooked this turkey in this, this little oven thing here. I wouldn't trust this little oven thing with, with my life. I wouldn't know how to cook in that thing. Amy, because she has control of heat, she can cook a turkey in her motorhome. Congratulations. Nicely done, Amy. This is Margot's beautiful bird. Nicely done. Citrus stuffed. Melanie brined her bird. She said it was one of the most moist birds ever. Michael was talking about putting compound butter under the skin, in between the skin and the breast. Said it was one of the most moist birds ever. Sherry Jo, she spatch cooked her bird. She laid it open and she put sage butter under the skin. Perfect idea. Karen, uh, I'm sorry, Greg, he said it was the best turkey ever because of web cooking classes. And man, that looks just beautifully brown. Uh, Sherry, uh, Sherry Joe, no, we talked about Sherry Joe. Karen, she did hers outside on the grill because she's so skilled at this difference between conductive and convective heat. She could take it outside and grill it. Stephen deep fried his in peanut oil and he was smart to have a fire extinguisher at the ready <laughs> because that is a very dangerous thing to do. I don't like deep frying turkeys. Uh, Christy, she did this beautiful bird in a cast iron skillet. How much easier is it to deglaze when you've done it in the skillet and make your turkey? And our friend Ebert Soto, who is always doing international things, told us a nice long story about meeting his family in an Airbnb and the kitchen was horrible. There was nothing, no usable equipment, but he was still able to make a beautiful turkey because of uh, his confidence in cooking, he's a carefree cook. Well, what do we do with all those leftovers? That's what I want to know. Mark makes a great stew. Nancy made a beautiful stock. Uh, BJ did a great turkey soup. Stephen does his famous open face turkey sandwiches with five year cheddar. Man, that looks good. Look at this one. Laura does a turkey on croute. She takes a phyllo dough and she takes that turkey, wraps it and makes like a Wellington, like a turkey Wellington. Uh, James does a beautiful turkey soup. Michael, this I thought this was really interesting, does Thanksgiving balls, he said. It's, and this is just what we were talking about. Like you can make balls out of anything. Leftover mashed potatoes, leftover cornbread stuffing, uh, some cornbread, sausage, carrots, celery, onions, even the cranberries go in there, a little bit of an egg binder and a three-part breading process, and he deep fries them. Thanksgiving balls. Can you believe that? Can you believe the talent going on in our Carefree Cooks community? It's just unbelievable. People bringing their families together, people enjoying the holidays, people giving of themselves. And that's what our Carefree community, Carefree Cooks community is all about. It's just so wonderful to have everybody with us. Uh, who's joining us now? Uh, Queen Tammy, she made turkey soup. That's cool. Uh, everybody's loving my idea about the roux cubes. Thank you, Brenda. That comes from a commercial kitchen when we made like 50 pounds of it. <laughs> I brought it home. I did a pound. So a little smaller. Um, Valerie, note to self, make sure you eat before Tuesday Talk Live so you're not hungry. Everybody's talking about the best turkey. Michael put mayonnaise on him. Fat, that's great. Uh, Darlene is proud of her oven. I didn't mean to diss your oven. I just meant to say, I don't know that I would be skilled with it. You are, luckily. That's good. Uh, Peggy stuffs wontons with ricotta. We're getting all these great ideas. Look at this. You want to come back to this post in the future. I don't see a lot of questions here. I'll, I'll look for questions later and answer them. But here's a great idea. Everybody is posting their ideas for holiday hors d'oeuvres now. Not only the gold nuggets that I gave you, but now all the comments. So if you know someone that would benefit from this, that wants ideas for holiday appetizers, like this video. Share it with your friends because not just what I said, 
But what they said, what all these people are telling you that they always make. And hey, don't forget the Web Cooking Classes store is now open. If you go to webcookingclasses.com, webcookingclasses.com slash store, you'll see all this cool stuff that we have on sale there now. So you can express your carefree cookingness and you can support our community of web cooking classes. Chef Todd Moore on another Tuesday Talk Live. Uh, you never know when I'm going to pop up again. So stay close by reminding you uh, that there's a method uh, to your holiday cooking success. And we'll see you soon.